give a warm Chattanooga welcome to Armando Carbonell. Out of the cold and rain, dust and sunshine came the music of cities and streets. The music and cities of the future wait beyond the edge. It's a bit of a tendency for people to think that the good times are always in the past. Everything's getting worse. There was a golden age. We don't have it anymore. I think historians often can show to us that that probably wasn't true in most cases. But I turn it around and think about the future. When people ask me what, uh, what my department is about, I often simply say it's about cities and nature and that often is not a satisfactory answer. <laughs> Cities around the world have become less dense over time. What that means is that as cities grow, they're going to consume even more land in the future than they have in the past. You know, we are connected to the whole planet, uh, and yet we live in these smaller spaces. Uh, how do we keep that in mind? How do we act with that in mind? The problem we see when we look out is the trend growth will consume a tremendous amount of the vital ecostructure of the region. This is a planning problem. Immodestly, I suggest the remedy, regional planning. The mega regions are the series of cities that live within the context of a larger ecostructure. These are the places that are growing, I think maybe what's been missing in urban planning is, is an understanding of how to integrate these systems. They're not going to have a new government that covers 16 counties, uh, so they're going to have to learn how to cooperate in order to do things that need to happen. The systems we're talking about really affect such large areas, and the kinds of infrastructure that we're talking about really need to be imagined over many jurisdictions, many communities, many states. And so we need to learn how to do that. I think it wouldn't be hard to find that there's enough land here to accommodate all of the growth that people might want without actually encroaching on any of the open space. And the message is that growth and protection of resources are not incompatible. So it's, it's really a matter of actually uh, analyzing the land that we have and using it more efficiently. And this is the story that says there's hope for a landscape that includes the commercial strips that are taking up a huge amount of land but not always functioning very well today. I found that it's best to look for the things that people agree about. Uh, very often there are things that virtually everybody in the country would want. They're good things. And that's a lot of hard work, but you can break it down into a pretty specific set of actions that you take to get to the objective you're trying to reach. The momentum here seems to be on uh, that there is a desire to actually accomplish some tangible results in the short run. But I, I think the challenge will be to keep people together. I think the more people understand the connection between uh, their homes, their neighborhoods, their communities, and these larger systems and processes, and see that they're not antagonistic to each other, that, that there really is a kind of a synthesis here building on a, a spirit that is, is based on, yes, we can do it, yes, this is a great place, people want to be here, uh, we have the makings of something really terrific. Uh, I think this is a, a positive asset and it's one that uh, doesn't exist everywhere. So my last quote from Gary Snyder, who we started with, with the world is places, I leave you with that. I think that's really what we're talking about. We're trying to make great places for people to live. And I see tremendous prospects for that uh, here in this region, and I do wish you well.